first order linear ODEs have the form y prime plus p of x y equals q of x, where p of x and q of x are known functions, and as always, we are looking for the unknown function that is y. Now, these differential equations can be solved using what's known an integrating factor. So that's a factor i of x that we use to multiply both sides of the equation in a way that turns the left-hand side into the derivative of a product. So our aim is to multiply both sides by i to get i times y prime plus i times p times y on the left-hand side. And let's just focus on the left-hand side. Our aim is to choose i of x, find i of x, so that this sum is the derivative of, the, of a product. And not just any product, we can even guess what that product needs, be, needs to be, because here we see i times y prime. So for it to be uh, the product rule um, in action, the other term needs to be i prime times y. But that means that i times p needs to be i prime. And so this is a new differential equation for i, not for y. This differential equation for i is a separable ODE that we can solve, dividing both sides by i and then integrating with respect to x. We obtain that this integrating factor i is e raised to the exponent that is the indefinite integral of that function p of x in front of y in the original equation. So if we can calculate the indefinite integral of p of x, raising e to that power gives us a function of x that is this integrating factor i. So again, i is the integrating factor. Once we have the integrating factor, we can then do what we were planning to, write the left-hand side as the derivative of a product, the product of i times y, then integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x, to get i times y be the integral of i of x q of x dx plus the integration constant um, c. Now dividing both sides of this equation by i, we obtain the general solution of the first order linear ODE, y being the reciprocal of the integrating factor multiplying the integral of i x q x dx plus any constant c. Okay. Let's solve some first order linear ODEs using integrating factors. Solve this initial value problem and evaluate the solution at x equals 2. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have found the solution at 2 to take the value 6. So first of all, you may notice that this uh, ODE is uh, a separable ODE, but let's ignore that for, for a fact and turn this into a form that is familiar. Uh, recognizable as a first order uh, linear ODE. So for that we divide uh, both sides by x to get it in the form uh, that we've seen previously. So it's y prime um, minus 1 over x y equals 0. Therefore p of x in this problem is negative 1 over x. We need to find the anti-derivative or the indefinite integral of this function, the integral of p of x dx is then the integral of negative 1 over x dx and that is minus the natural logarithm of, of x. Um, I will ignore the absolute values for now because we are only interested in positive x values anyway and so raising uh, e to that exponent we get the integrating factor. So i of x is e uh, raised to the integral of p of x dx, that is e raised to the negative natural logarithm of x, and that is simply um, 1 over x, just using a uh, simple uh, laws of log logarithm. Um, now, uh, let's check if it works indeed. So let's multiply both sides of this equation um, by um, by this integrating factor. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by the integrating factor that is 1 over x. Let's see what we get. We get 1 over x y prime minus 1 over x squared y equals 0. And indeed, if you look carefully, you may notice that this is, on the left-hand side, uh, this is the 
a derivative of 1 over x times y. It being 0 means that 1 over x times y is a constant, let's call it c, and therefore y is a constant times x. Now we know that y at 1, for x equals 1, we get, uh, well, from this solution we get c times 1, that is c, but that is supposed to be 3, so we figured out that the constant of integration is 3, and therefore the value at uh, x equals 2 is 3 times 2, that is 6. Let's look at the next question. Solve this initial value problem and evaluate the solution at x equals 5 over 4. So again, this is a separable ODE, but try solving it using the integrating factor instead. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and I found the value to be 2. So using integrating factor, um, before we can do that, we need to identify the function that multiplies y in the equation, and that is negative 2 times the cotangent of x, or you could also write it as minus 2 times the cosine of x over the sine of x. Now, to find the integrating factor, we first need to um, compute the indefinite integral of p of x dx, so that is the integral of negative 2 times the cosine of x over the sine of x dx, uh, which you already know how to do by now. And the solution is negative 2 times the natural logarithm of sine of x. Again, I'm ignoring the absolute values because of the x values we were given. So this is what we need to exponentiate to get the integrating factor. So e to the uh, indefinite integral of p of x dx is now e to the negative 2 times the natural logarithm of sine of x, which by laws of logarithms is just 1 over the sine squared of x. And so it's 1 over sine squared of x that the integrating factor is. So let's check if we multiply both sides of the original equation by uh, uh, i of x, that is 1 over sine squared of x. What, what, what do we get? We get 1 over sine squared of x y prime minus 2 times the cosine of x divided by sine cubed of x y equals 0. And indeed, if you look at the left hand side, it is the derivative of 1 over sine squared of x times y. So that means that 1 over sine squared of x times y is a constant. Let's denote that constant by c. So therefore, y is equal to c times the sine squared of x. And uh, the initial value, so at uh, x equals pi over 2, we can evaluate this function to get c, because it's c times sine squared of pi over 2, but sine of pi over 2 is just 1. So it's um, c that we get. But that uh, initial value needs to be 4, so c is equal to 4. Therefore, the solution, uh, the general solution, y of x, is equal to 4 times sine squared of x. And then evaluating this at pi over 4, we get 4 times the sine squared of pi over 4. That's 4 times 1 over root 2 squared. Sine at pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, so that's 4 times a half or 2. Let's look at the next question. Solve this initial value problem and evaluate the solution at x equals 0 0.2. Pause the video and give your answer around it two decimal places in the box. Hope you paused it and have found this value. So this is not a separable ODE, so in this case we really need to use the integrating factor method. So first let me just rewrite the equation um, in a form that's um, familiar to us. So just subtracting y from both sides lets me um, identify the factor multiplying y as negative 1 and the function q on the right hand side is simply x, q of x is equal to x. So therefore to find the integrating factor we first need to uh, find the indefinite integral of p of x, that's just the indefinite integral of negative 1. 
that is simply negative x and therefore uh, the integrating factor is the exponential of the integral of p of x dx and that is just simply e to the negative x now let's see what multiplying this equation by e to the negative x does so multiplying by the integrating factor leaves us with e to the negative x times y prime minus e to the negative x y equals e to the negative x times x and there here indeed on the right hand, left hand side we had the derivative of e to the negative x times y and therefore when we integrate both sides with respect to x we get e to the negative x times y being the integral of e to the negative x times x dx plus the constant of integration c now this type of integral we know how to evaluate using an integration by parts and we get e to the negative x y b minus e to the negative x minus x times e to the negative x plus any constant uh, c um, now multiplying um, both sides by e to the x we get the solution y of x b negative 1 negative x plus c times e to the x and indeed the initial value um, at x equals 0 well if we evaluate the function we get negative 1 plus c times e to the 0 so that's negative 1 plus c and that is supposed to be equal to 1 and that uh, tells us that c is equal to 2 and so therefore the solution the general solution the, the, the solution of the initial value problem y of x is negative 1 minus x plus twice e to the x and therefore when we evaluate this solution at 0 0.2 we get minus 1.2 so minus 1 minus 0 0.2 that's negative uh, 1.2 plus twice e to the 0 0.2 and if we evaluate this, approximate this, we get uh, 1.24 uh, rounded to two decimal places. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.